Welcome, good friends and guests. In the name of the one who is the Redeemer, not only of all humanity, but of all the creation, every bug, every bird, every creature, every galaxy, Jesus Christ, let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you this day that we can come together in the total embracing blessing that you bring to us through Jesus' resurrection. Fill our hearts now, Lord, that our voices might ride and rise with those throughout the entire universe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. About the service, all that you need to know is in your worship folder. Just join along and sing as you feel comfortable. I invite all who are able to rise. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation for this saving mystery and for this water. Let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city 
through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Oh, 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, creator of the world, you draw us into your presence through prayer and celebration. As we gather, prompt our hearts and minds to cherish the gifts of your earth. Always reflecting your image, guide us as stewards to care for the earth as you would. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to the water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first is Pajan, it is the one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold, and the gold of that land is good. Delium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is Gion. It is the one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows east of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John. For God so loved the world that God gave his only Son that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. 
But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Earth Day, Sunday. I know it's not an official a church religious holiday, but for Christians, the earth, the creation, is something that we highly value and treasure because our God, uh, who created all that is, highly values and loves the creation. In fact, I think if we were to write a, a chapter in one of the books of the Bible or add a book to the Bible, we would need to title that chapter, that book, The Sacred Romance. Because one of the things that we see all throughout Scripture is how deeply in love God is with the entire creation. That is precisely what the Gospel of John says in John chapter 3, verse 16, a verse that many of you have known by heart for years and years and years. One of the most well-known verses of Scripture throughout the world and culturally, because you'll see it at times at football games, people at the end zone holding up a sign saying, John 316, and no doubt there are many people who can recite that from memory. For God so loved the world. Two words in that verse I want to focus on for the moment, and the first one is loved. God loves, God is deeply head over heels in love with the world. And the second word to pay attention to, particularly in that verse, is the word world. And in the original language of the Greek New Testament, the word that is used for world is cosmos. For God so loved the cosmos that God gave the only Son. God does love, God cares, and God went the extra mile. God gave everything up, put it all on the line to save, to redeem humanity from the grips of sin, death, and the devil. But it's not only the people on the earth that God has taken this risk, but it's the entire creation, the entire earth, every planet in the solar system, every galaxy, every star in the universe. God loves the creation. God loves the cosmos. God loves the world. So as we gather this Sunday and lift up, remember, uh, the creation is a part of a global Earth Day celebration, we are invited to become part of God's love story, to become part of God's expression of affection and commitment and, and caring for all that is. You know, God is attached to this creation. We see that quite clearly and, and explicitly in the first reading from, from Genesis chapter 2. That's the, the second creation story where, where God in chapter 2 of Genesis, God uh, creates uh, the human being, the man. God takes the soil, God takes the dust, God takes the clay from the earth, and God forms and shapes the man. And what we uh, can pay special note to is that when it says that God takes the clay, the earth stuff, the word is Adama. We have a, a camp, Adama, a pottery art camp out at Bethel Horizons. God takes the Adama, the clay, and makes the Adam. So really, God takes the clay and, and forms and fashions a clay creature. And so we are intimately bound and caught up with the entire creation. 
We are a part of it and an expression of it. And so we have in our world seen at various times and places how we are separate from the creation and, and rule over the creation. But here in Genesis we see that we are part of it and part of what God loves. And if you go back even to Genesis chapter 1, we see that in the beginning when God began to create the heavens and the earth, uh, the earth was a formless void and God's spirit, the wind of God, swept over the deep, the waters of chaos. And then God said, let there be light. There was light. And then God said, it is good. And every day, every moment of creation, it says that same thing, it is good. And then God creates humankind and God says it is very good. And, and that particular word in, in Hebrew doesn't simply mean that God stood back and said, man, that's, that's good stuff. You know, God doesn't look in the mirror and say, hey, it's, it's A-OK. -okay. The word in the original Bible language of the Hebrew for good is much richer and deeper than just a thumbs up. What it says actually in that Hebrew is God stood back and God looked and, and, and God uh, said, man, it's, that's, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's, that's magnificent. And so what we see and read in the creation stories is, is that God is smitten. God is captivated. God creates the universe, all that exists, and God is captured by the beauty, by the mystery, and by the power and all that is there in the creation so that God feels, it says here in, in Genesis chapters 1 and 2, a deep and guttural, a deep and primal connection, a connection that you see and you hear about when women give birth, they have this connection with a child with that umbilical cord. And it's, man, it is deep and it is, it is lasting. And, and so God in the Bible, Old Testament especially, is deeply attached in a kind of a womb-like fashion and God's affection is expressed all throughout the entire Bible. Even the creation itself responds in kind. There are many passages in the Bible and in the Psalms where the creation itself sings praises expresses love and devotion. There are many psalms where the stars shout out and declare the praise of the Lord. And as the stars themselves and as the galaxies themselves cry out in praise of its creator, it's expressing a love song. So the relationship that God has with the creation is that of a romance, of a sacred romance where God loves the creation and creation loves God back. And so as we become followers of Jesus, as we walk with Christ, as we are shaped by Christ, we become more like Him so that we are not only shaped in terms of having our sins forgiven, so that we can all go to heaven, that's all a good goal, so that we can walk without a sense of guilt, so that we know that our past can be forgiven and our present problems can be managed and our future all secure. That's all very true. But it means more than that. It means also that, that His values and His thoughts and His priorities also become ours. And so what Jesus expresses is God's utter devotion to the creation, how God didn't simply uh, walk away from this world that's caught in sin and imperfection, but Jesus Christ comes to express God's just total and absolute commitment. Go, he goes to the cross. He dies. He gives it all for the sake of creation. And so as we are taken up into the life of Jesus and are shaped by, by His vision, by His call, and by His passion, we also begin to develop and feel a stirring of attraction and love for what God loves, and that is the creation. I say that because personally that wasn't always the case with me. I, I didn't always personally have a strong attachment 
uh, to the creation. Because I grew up, I hate to say that, but in, in West Texas, in West Texas, it ain't pretty. You know, there's a place not too far from where I grew up in Odessa called No Trees. You know why they call it No Trees? Because there ain't no trees. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing out there but a bunch of tumbleweeds and dust and horny toads. It's just barren. It's barren and dry. The wind blows every single day, and it's just as dry. And, and sometimes in the spring and summer, have a windstorm come up, and, and it's not just like a, a, a sudden gust of wind that kind of blows throughout the day, but it's something that will develop for days. And you can see it rumbling across the West Texas horizon, a wall a mile two and three high of dirt that's coming at you. And, and this, these dust storms, these dirt storms, they will pit the paint on your car. And it's just not pleasant. And so growing up in West Texas, uh, the only thing I knew you did with uh, the earth, with the land, was you poked a hole in it. You know, to get that, that black stuff, that petroleum. You know, you poked a hole in it to, to um, extract that, that liquid gold, uh, the Texas tea. You know, uh, West Texas crude. And, and it smelled bad, too, when they did that. And when they processed it, it smelled like sulfur. The whole town stunk to high heaven. And so when I was growing up, uh, the creation, the land, uh, was something that you, you uh, didn't appreciate, except that you could pull stuff out of it and make money on it. Or if you needed to, when you changed the oil in your car, uh, you just drove out in the field and you drained your pan out there in the, in the field. Um, you know, they don't do that anymore because uh, I guess we learned along the way that that's not good for the ground. <laughs> you know, it, it, it poisons it. And so, but that's how I grew up and, and it was something that you just, uh, you, you, uh, you did. And in fact, you know, this has been tax season and, and I sent my taxes to my accountant and had to include my oil royalty check. Yeah, I got an income statement from, from my royalty company cause, because uh, I've got, I get oil royalties. Yeah, my, my great, great grandfather, John Taylor, um, back in Prohibition days, he was a bootlegger and, um, and a successful one. And because he was so successful at bootlegging, he had a lot of cash, you know what I'm saying? Lots and lots of cash. And so he had to do something with that cash. And, and you know, when you have money from ill-gotten gains, it's called dirty money, you know, like when you sell drugs, something like that. Uh, he had all this dirty cash. So he had to do something with that cash besides keeping it in his barn. So he, he began to buy stuff. He began to buy up farms and the Oklahoma Panhandle, bought several farms and, and several grocery stores. And then he began to buy up uh, gas, natural gas fields. And and oil wells. So um, he uh, hit it hard and hit it large. He was a Beverly Hillbilly par excellence. But, but in addition to, to spending his money on, on grocery stores and, and farms and oil wells, he also had a, a mistress. And, um, and so whenever his wife found out, she kicked him to the curb and sent him on his way and he took all of his stuff with him except a couple of oil wells that stayed in the family. So uh, me and my brother, sister, and others, we get, we get oil check royalties. And so I had to put that on my taxes. And grand total, $18.76. <laughs> I mean, um, so that's what the ground was for growing up. But over time, and having been moving around and having grown in my understanding and my connection with Christ, uh, began to see how much God loves and how crazy God is for the entire cosmos, for the birds of the air, uh, for the, the bugs of the ground, for the fish in the sea, for the trees, and for all the planets. God declared, that is beautiful. It's magnificent, and God is captivated by it. And as we ourselves 
follow and connect with Christ, we also are captivated by this same love story. And so when God invites us, leads us, encourages us to be good stewards of the creation, it's not because God's swagging the finger and saying, oh, you, you bad uh, boy, you bad people, uh, take better care of this. You've got to make all these sacrifices so that you can uh, protect the environment and watch out for the climate. No, when God encourages in Scripture to care for the creation, God is inviting us to expand our experience of wonder and love so that as we more and more have greater and greater affection and love for what God loves, it expands our own hearts and our own horizons and enriches our own lives. Today we celebrate this great occasion of Earth Day, Creation Day, in a way that we can continue to fall in love. With, with what God has fallen in love with. As God loves us, we're giving out after services all these LED bulbs. And it's just one teeny little way for us to take a small step to, to express our affection for what God loves. I invite you all to grab uh, an LED bulb or a case of them. We've got more LED bulbs than you can shake a stick at. We've got tens of thousands. They're not all in the building, but we have almost an unlimited access to LED bulbs. So take, take a case, take it, give it to your, your neighbor, your family, uh, to the person who checks out your groceries at the store. Uh, but let's, uh, let's uh, allow ourselves to be swept up into this sacred romance. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all the beauty of the creation. And Lord, that you created all this and, and you loved it. And Lord, you put it in our hands because you trust us. And so we ask that you would help us to uh, live up to, live into uh, your view and assessment of us and help us, Lord, to do what it is that you do in caring for this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we thank you for the beauty of your 
creation, the entire cosmos, and how much love, Lord, you pour into it and wrap it with. We pray that you would capture our hearts as well, that we might reflect uh, your dedication and affection for the world around. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, for our world, this globe, the earth, where there is violence and destruction and death. We remember especially the nation of Ukraine and pray that you would continue to bless leaders there and around the world with wisdom and insight, guide their thoughts, guide their actions, guide their hearts, that they might lead and provide direction in a way that brings about the greatest justice for the people of Ukraine and the greatest and quickest peace. Lord, in your mercy. Oh well, God, we pray for those who are sick, those who are dying, and those who are grieving in our own very midst. We pray for the healing of Jean Erickson and for, Lord, people like Bill Madison that we know and love and care for. We pray, Lord, that you would bless those who have recently lost a loved one. We pray for the families of Bill Kuby and Muriel Anderson and Marion Malria. We pray, Lord, that you would bless the, the family of uh, Stephen Napier. Pray that you would draw them close to you, that they might see and death the gate to eternal life. And, Lord, more and more to experience your hand of comfort, strength, and healing. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, God, we pray for this community, Bethel, here in person and that around in our online and telecast congregation, and ask that you would help us to expand our hearts, our minds, and our arms to embrace, uh, Lord, what you have embraced in the creation to do and to act and to live our lives in ways that, that reflect your will for the creation. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another. God's peace. And we do at this time receive an offering. And if you are a guest, we don't expect that you contribute, though you may if you like. It's one of the ways we express our love and devotion to God and become more a part of God's transformation of the world. There's also in the pews a connect card for any prayer requests that you might have. And if you're a guest, uh, to let us know that you were here so that we can express to you a, a good uh, thank you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for what you have first given us, us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Signs of your gracious love, receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. After he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Come for all things are prepared. You may be seated. Everybody in this room, of course, is welcome to the Lord's table. Uh, come up the center aisle at the instruction of the ushers. Uh, take the, the bread in your hand. It's gluten-free. Eat it, and then take the cup in your hand and drink it. And then dispose of your cups on the side as you exit by the side aisle to return to your pews.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, keep you and strengthen you in his peace. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the healing power of this gift of life, your body, your blood, the bread, the wine, your very self poured into us. Breathe upon us, O God, that we might come alive in you and you in us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Most all the announcements are in the back of the bulletin of the most recent church newsletter, the Bethelite. Copies of that are on the wall as you exit the church. Also out there on that wall is an orange welcome bag for first-time guests. Please grab that. It's got details on the church's background, its programs, what's in store for the future. And over near the Good Shepherd Chapel is a table with... Um, uh, cases of LED light bulbs. So please feel free to uh, grab an armful, take it to your car, and get another armful. I'm telling you, we, we've, got, we've got a bunch of bulbs, and uh, more than we can shake a stick at. So um, you can take as many as you want. Uh, coming up, I would uh, call your attention to the fact that uh, uh, a Two weeks. Next Sunday, we'll start a new series of messages on God on film. Um, and then on the second Sunday of May is Mother's Day. There will be a Mother's Day brunch. So uh, please take, your, uh, take some time that morning to join us down in Borgward Hall for a meal together. There will also be uh, a variety of other activities surrounding that a Bible giveaway for the children and a book for, uh, for women, for moms. So that'll be a nice time together. And now, uh, Todd, tell us more. Well, to add just a bit to what Mike said already, the Bible is full of references to light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And in the Psalms, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? This weekend at Bethel, as we honor Earth Day and the gift of creation which God puts in our care, we're thinking about the light in our homes and the energy that lighting consumes. Conserving energy and shifting to renewable energy comprise the biggest single issue in fighting pollution and climate change. While large-scale government action is key, so are smaller actions that we can take every day in our own homes. This morning, as Mike said, outside the Good Shepherd Chapel, members of the Caring for Creation group, easily identified by their high fashion t-shirts like mine, are giving away LED light bulbs. LEDs last much longer and consume 75% less energy than conventional bulbs. And while there may be no free lunch, these LED bulbs come to us at no charge through Focus on Energy, the program of our electric utilities that helps organizations and individuals take action to improve their energy efficiency. So be sure to pick up as many four packs as you can use. And as they say on late night TV, but wait, there's more. Don't forget to pick up an environmental action commitment form that outlines many actions that we can take to care for creation. So let there be light with free LED lights this morning. Thank you, Todd. And of course, as we do each Sunday, we have donut holes and coffee. I invite you all to stay and get some caffeine in your system and some sugar on your fingers. Now the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Go in peace, tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.